Hello my YouTube friends and welcome back to another Generation Behind Hi-Fi video. Today we're going to talk about crossovers and if they actually make a big difference like some people claim. My test subjects today will be the JBL Studio 630. I'm going to leave one speaker completely stock and this is the stock crossover out of it. And I'm curious if I were to completely rebuild this crossover using all really high quality parts, will it actually make a difference in sound quality? Let's find out. The JBL Studio 630 has an MSRP of $699, and for that money you get a pretty complex crossover, but the quality of components being used are, well, pretty cheap. JBL did make an attempt by using a metalized polyester film capacitor and an air core inductor on the tweeter circuit, but the woofer circuit leaves a lot to be desired. The woofer circuit contains three iron core inductors and several electrolytic capacitors. Holy Eddie, current Batman! So why are electrolytic capacitors and iron core inductors not ideal to use in crossover designs? First, let's briefly talk about capacitors and inductors. Capacitors are used in crossovers to restrict lower frequencies while allowing higher frequencies to pass through. However, using electrolytic capacitors in a speaker's crossover design is not ideal because they have a high dielectric absorption, which causes serious phase delays. Signals going through electrolytic capacitors are slowed down and suffer severe harmonic distortion. Electrolytic caps also have high impedance and ESL values at higher frequencies, making them not an ideal choice. Inductors are used to restrict high frequencies while allowing lower frequencies through. Metal core inductors cause saturation and distortion, which directly impact sound quality. By using air core inductors, we eliminate the effects of saturation because air core inductors do not have a metal core to saturate. Now that we understand the basics of what some of the different components do in a crossover and how they behave, now let's get on with the test. This isn't going to be a very scientific test with a bunch of measurements because I don't have the equipment to do that. Now that I said that, I can only imagine what the comments will be, but I really don't care. This test is something I've been wanting to perform for quite a while and thought I would share my anecdotal evidence while also having some fun. I will try and capture some of the differences I hear between the two speakers using my Sony 4K camera, but really don't know how it will turn out. One speaker will have the stock JBL crossover in it, and the other speaker will have the same crossover design, just with much, much better components. In total, I spent a tad over $200 on these components to rebuild the crossovers in my Studio 630s, all in the name of anecdotal science. Basically, I took the values from the original components, and then purchased much higher quality components to build my new crossover from. For the tweeter circuit, I'll be using Clarity Copper Connect capacitors. I really like the tonality of these capacitors and I think they offer great value for money. The tweeter circuit will also be using a higher 18 gauge Dayton Audio perfect layer air core inductor that has a tolerance of plus or minus 3%. The remaining capacitors on the tweeter circuit will be metalized polypropylene foil capacitors from Dayton Audio and Audine. I also replaced all the Sandcast resistors with Dayton Audio's precision audio resistors that have a tolerance of plus or minus 1%. On the woofer circuit, I replaced all of the iron core inductors with 18 gauge Dayton Audio or Janssen Audio air core inductors. I couldn't find a replacement air core inductor with a value of 3.9 millihenries, so I took a 3 millihenry and a 0.9 millihenry inductor and ran them in series. I also replaced all the electrolytic capacitors with metalized polypropylene film capacitors. I will leave a complete list of the parts that I used in the description. I understand that the resistance and inductive properties will change somewhat by swapping out these components with better quality components, but that isn't the point of this test and is beyond the scope of this video. This is a simple test to see if swapping out like for like values or close to like to like values with higher quality components will yield better sound quality from a speaker. All right, so I got my setup all completed here. I have the JBL Studio 630 sitting on top of my cabinet and they're connected to my speaker switcher. My speaker switcher will allow me to switch between the two speakers right on the fly. 
The CD case on top will represent what speaker is currently playing. The speaker on the left is the factory JBL Studio 630. I haven't done a single thing to it. And the speaker on the right is the JBL Studio 630 that has the rebuilt crossover in it with much better components in it. Now I've already been listening to a couple of clips here and I can already see a substantial difference in sound quality between these two speakers. Hopefully you guys can see that too on this video. So now I'm gonna play a couple of copyright free music so that way you guys can hear the differences between the two speakers. I really tried to capture the differences between these two speakers on camera using copyright free music that was available on YouTube, but the quality of free music is very hit or miss. Hopefully the viewers were able to hear some of the differences that I heard. If not, I created another video using much higher quality source material and I think the differences can be heard a bit better over the camera. I just couldn't include it in this video without risk of being demonetized. I will leave a link to that video in the description. To me, the differences were quite noticeable between the two speakers. The speaker with the factory crossover in it sounded like someone had their hands over both drivers when compared to the other speaker. Another way to put it is the speaker with the standard crossover sounded very two-dimensional and the one with the upgraded crossover sounded very three-dimensional. In my opinion, the speaker with the better crossover sounded like it had more dimension, depth, and clarity no matter what track I threw at it. Voices from singers sounded more natural and lively. Another thing that was apparent is the small background noises from backup singers and instruments were brought forward and were easy to hear. 
No doubt, high quality crossover components can make a significant difference in how a speaker will sound. The only question is, should you spend $200 plus on new crossover parts for a speaker that originally had an MSRP of $700 a pair? I'll leave that up to the viewers to decide, but hopefully this video helped illustrate the differences on what good crossover components can do. So long and happy listening!